Altivo Tarantula Pro 3D printer. Got it sitting right here. Done quite a bit of projects, run quite a few things through it. A couple spools of filament. Gonna review this thing in depth coming up. I'm Roger. Welcome to what I call the loft above the shop. It's a chilly, rainy October day out there and it's nice and warm up here. So I decided it was time after running a lot of projects through this printer to talk about its performance. Uh, if you watch my assembly video and my first video on this, I had two issues. One was a bad power cord. That can happen anywhere. But I could not, absolutely could not get the supplied filament, which is right here, to stick to that bed. Uh, once I came up and got my own filament, everything worked perfect. And I have since tried this on one of my Creality printers back here, and it wouldn't stick there either. So the, it's the only downside I found on this printer is that the supplied filament they give you the sample is just plain junk. So get some good filament. Hopefully they'll uh, upgrade this and use something different. I don't know what's up with this stuff, but it just doesn't work. But I've got some of the projects sitting in front of me here I've done. I've run... Uh, a, s a complete spool of blue through it. I'm on my second spool of white and right now I'm running a calibration cube which is something I usually do right from the onset but because I had all these things I needed to make and I had all these back here at the time busy I didn't have time to do it. So what's a calibration cube? Here's one from another printer right here and it will show the X, Y, and Z and then what you do after you print it is you take a digital caliper like this one here I need to turn on well you need a digital caliper with a good battery so I guess I need to do that first one of the problems with this caliper is if you close the case it can push on the button and it'll run the battery down I need to figure something out better for that but at any rate digital caliper and the point of a calibration cube is then you measure your cube all the way around and it should be 20 millimeters every direction. And this one has been running 19.99. This is off the longer printer that's back here in the corner. 19.97 and 19.98. So I'd say that was pretty good. So I'm running Calibration Cube on here now. We'll find out just exactly how accurate this is. It's almost done, and I'll give you a little update on that. Okay, our cube is ready, so I can do a little bit of measuring here. So here's my calibration cube right here, X, Y, and Z. Pop this on here, and we'll do X first. 20.01. We'll do Y. 20.08. I can still live with that. And we'll do Z. 19.99. I think that's pretty close. I'm not going to start messing with things here when everything's coming out that close. As you can see from these projects here uh, that I have run through this, and this is not all, there's other ones we I've already shipped that the, the resolution is excellent on it. And this printer is quite a bit faster than the Ender 3's. It seems to print things out faster. I haven't timed them from project to project, but it, it's made a difference. I, if I start one of those and then start one of these making, let's say, one of these, this one will be done first by, by quite a bit. So yeah, it saves a little bit of time there, although I'm not one to set and babysit my 3D printers. I usually get these set and running in the morning and then I just let them do their thing and come back uh, however many hours later I need to, take my projects off, reload and start over again. This is one of those rare times I don't have all these running. I only have one running in the corner right now and I actually do have another printer coming that I'm going to have to find a home for. So I'm going to have to set up a little bit different type of print farm than what I have in here because I am literally running out of space. Okay, so we'll get into the pros and cons of this printer. Uh, pros, I've already pointed out the one, that it does print faster than my Creality printers do. I haven't compared it to the longer LK5 over there, but 
that's a completely different animal really. I'm putting this kind of on par with these Creality Ender 3 V2s because it's uh, got a similar work bed area and similar Z height, similar type setup. Uh, so the, the, again the pro on this is it prints faster. The bed and the PLA heats in the hot end, heats up very quickly compared to the Ender 3s. Uh, just Kind of a moot point, but it, it's kind of nice when it heats up quicker. The uh, interface is similar to what you would find on an Ender 3. It's not a touch screen. You've got the knob and you do your selections, but it's very, very easy to navigate. And everything there works well. Uh, another pro is it uses an actual SD card instead of one of the little micro SD cards that I tend to drop on the floor and lose and so on. And yet, of course, you can also tether this to your computer and print from your computer. I've done that on this as well. When I did the uh, initial setup, I printed from right from uh, the slicer to this using Cura. Do I have any cons about this? Well, other than the uh, little Ill incident I had with this junk filament, the power cord, actually, no, I haven't had no incidents with this at all, no problems. Of prints are sticking, the, the bed is staying level, I haven't had to fool with it. Uh, a lot of people are fooling with their bed about every time they print. I have printed, I did all of these just one right after the other and I never checked the bed leveling again at all. Once I moved it up here from down in the shop, I did check it again and it took one little minor adjustment in one corner but otherwise it was just fine. A uh, little con about it is on the hot end your nozzle is different than what you will find on a lot of the other printers. So you're going to have to have a hot end nozzle for this printer. You couldn't take a like a Creality nozzle and even though it'll thread in, the threads are not as long and you'll end up with a clog because I don't think that that Bowden tube would reach down in there all the way and meet up with that other nozzle. I haven't tried it because obviously I haven't had to change the nozzle and it does come with a spare and of course they have spare parts so that's one little bit of a con because I have to stock another spare part. But So what are my final thoughts on this? It's a good printer. Uh, yes, TVOOP did provide this to me to test and demonstrate, which I've been doing all along here. And I do point out any bad things that I find. And I try to keep everything open and honest. And if you watch the assembly video, you saw that I had to tinker with the limit switch a little bit. And I had to, uh, of course, find another power cord found a piece of hardware in the box that I had to look all over the printer, try to figure out where it came from. Well, it must have fallen in there in the factory or something like that. It didn't even go to this. But it was one of them little treasure hunt things. You got that spare part left over or you find one and you're wondering where it went. Uh, again, as far as accuracy, everything has been very, very accurate. I've done some very small parts. And believe it or not, these little tiny things stuck just fine. I didn't have any problem with them shifting. I didn't have to put a brim around them or anything. I definitely didn't have to use a raft. Uh, these here are, are holders for lasers, different types, and I've done several different sizes of those on here. And that's worked out perfect. This is a uh, battery holder for a DeWalt 20 volt battery. These are two holders for the same type of thing. Again, different types of two holders, different types of uh, cordless drills. I do a lot of those. We sell quite a few of them. So that's what I've been cranking out on this. And it's, again, worked just fine. No problems. So if you're looking to get into 3D printing and you maybe don't want to get into a, a Creality because you've heard all these horror stories, and you know, I have a couple too, but their customer service is not the greatest. Uh, TVOOP did reach out to me to offer some other filament and stuff, but I said, no, it's fine. I've got the solution taken care of. So I would imagine their customer service is uh, pretty much on par with some of the better companies. So yes, it would be a, a good printer to get started with, get into. Easy to use, easy to assemble, easy to set up. So if you got anything out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up. Always helps the channel. Roger in the loft above the shop. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.